This video will demonstrate how to properly install the Raychem XMI mineral insulated heat tracing cables on the external surface of metal piping systems. Be aware some components and parts shown might be different from country to country and the written instruction manuals must be carefully reviewed before installing. Ensure that all required personal protective equipment is used. Installation instructions are provided with all products as well as on the Pentair website at www.pentairthermal.com. Two types of Raychem XMI cables will be covered in this demonstration. XMI A alloy 825 sheath cables and XMI L low temperature sheath cables. First, identify the major components of the XMI heat tracing system, which includes the XMI heating unit, accessories such as the attachment tie wire and pipe straps, junction boxes, and the control devices, which may include thermostats or advanced digital controllers. Note that XMI heating units are supplied as factory terminated units. XMI A heating units are available in four possible design configurations. Design A, Design B, Design D, and Design E. XMI L heating units are available in two possible design configurations. Design D and Design E. Each XMI heating unit is supplied with an identification tag on which the heating cable catalog number is permanently printed. Check the tag to ensure the voltage, wattage and heating cable length matches the design parameters. This diagram shows how a typical XMI heating unit circuit is installed on a section of pipe. Before you begin installing the XMI heat tracing system, there are some initial steps we recommend you to take. 1. Review the design drawing so you are familiar with the layout. 2. Compare the list of materials received to ensure that all components are on site. 3. Make sure all mechanical pipe testing such as hydrostatic testing, purging, is completed. 4. Inspect the piping for any burrs, rough surfaces, or sharp edges and remove them if necessary. 5. Verify that any surface coatings are dry to the touch. 6. Inspect the cable coil for any nicks and cuts. And 7. Ensure that you have the correct heating cable. XMI heating units are individually designed for each section of pipe and it is critical that you ensure the correct heating unit is installed on the specific section of pipe that it was designed for. Conduct an insulation resistance test while the cable is still coiled and in as received condition out of the box. Now measure the insulation resistance between the conductors and the cable sheath. This is done by connecting one of the Mago meter leads to the conductors and the other lead to the cable sheath. The insulation resistance test should be conducted using a test voltage of 1000 volts DC. However, in the absence of equipment with this capability, a 500 volts DC test is suitable to detect most installation related concerns. Insulation resistance should be 100 Mago ohms minimum. Record the megometer reading in the installation and maintenance manual. The insulation resistance test should be done several times during the installation process. Before installing the cable. Before installing thermal insulation. After installing thermal insulation. Prior to initial startup or commissioning. When doing a regular system inspection. And after any maintenance or repair work. Measure the cable resistance. The cable resistance is measured by using a standard digital multimeter. For A, B and D designs, connect the multimeter test leads to the heating cable tails. For E designs, which have two tails at each end, short the tails at one end and connect the multimeter test leads to the tails at the other end. Now, 
Measure the resistance of the heating cable. Most XMI heating cable resistances are less than 100 ohms. The measured value should be approximately equal to the design value. The design value resistance can be calculated using the formula resistance ohms equal volts squared divided by watts. Voltage and wattage can be found on the heating cable identification tag. If mounting junction boxes or equipment onto the pipe with brackets, install the brackets on the pipe before installing the heating cable. This will avoid damage to the heating cable as the tension required to secure the banding for the bracket is greater than the tension required to secure the cable to the pipe. Now, uncoil the heating cable and lay it alongside the pipe section to be traced. The cold lead is the portion of the XMI heating unit that delivers power to the heated section of the cable. The cold lead portion can be easily identified since it will have the XMI heating unit tag attached to it. Using pipe straps or banding, attach the cold lead to the end of the pipe nearest to the power supply point. The hot cold joint connects the cold lead to the heated section and can be identified as the larger diameter transition portion as shown here. It is critical that the hot cold joint is handled with care in order to not damage the conductors inside. Ensure the cable is not bent too close to the hot cold joint and maintain a straight section of at least 6 inches 150 millimeters, on either side of the hot cold joint and secure the joint itself to the pipe with a pipe strap or band. Note that the portion of the joint on the heating cable side is a protective feature called a bell mouth and is in place in order to ensure that the cable is not bent too close to the hot cold joint area. Ensure the band is placed directly over the hot cold joint portion and not the bell mouth portion. Attach the heating cable and cold lead on each side of the hot cold joint leaving approximately 6 inches 150 millimeters, on each side. Care should be taken not to over-tighten straps or tie wire used to attach cables and joint components to the pipe. Materials should be free to expand and contract during the heating and cooling cycles. In some instances where the maintain or exposure temperatures exceed the capabilities of the hot-cold joint, then the hot-cold joint must not be fastened to the pipe. In this case, a small length of the heating cable and the hot cold joint will be located off the pipe, as shown here. Follow the detailed instructions in the design documents for installation at the hot cold joint area. Cold leads should always emerge from the thermal insulation in such a way that the hole in the insulation cannot permit entry of water or other contaminants. Form a drip loop section in the cold lead to ensure that water is directed away from the entry into the junction box. Now, let's install the heating cable to the pipe. Using the tie wire, fasten the heating cable to the pipe at 12 to 18 inch, 300 to 450 millimeter intervals. Twist the tie wire until the wire breaks off from the twisting action. When approaching a heatsink area on the pipe, such as a valve, flange, or pipe shoe, ensure that you refer to the design documents and reserve the required amount of cable that is to be applied around the heatsink area. Bend the heating cable around the valve, flange, or pipe support as shown in order to ensure that the correct amount of heating cable is applied. When using XMIL heating cable, Similar methods are used to attach the cable to the pipe using the tie wire. Ensure that you do not overbend the cable and observe the minimum bending radius of the cable. The cable minimum bending radius is six times the outside diameter of the heating cable. Note that for XMI L low temperature sheath cables, the heating cable is inside the outer corrugated sheath and the minimum bending radius applies to this inner heating cable under the corrugated sheath. Refer to the heating cable reference number from the cable tag and the XMI data sheet to obtain the heating cable outside diameter in order to calculate the minimum bending radius for the XMI L low temperature sheath cables. 
Continue to attach the cable to the pipe with tie wire. After assembly, the cable should be snug and flush to the pipe surface, but does not need to be excessively tight. Install cables around the bottom section of the pipe, avoiding bottom dead center. For two cable runs, install the cable between 30 degrees and 45 degrees on either side of the bottom dead center. For three cable runs, install the bottom cable about 10 degrees to one side of the bottom dead center. For additional runs of cable, space the cable as evenly as possible around the pipe. Avoid placing cable directly on the upper surface of the pipe, since it would be more susceptible to damage in these areas. XMI heating cable must never be overlapped or adjacent cables must never touch, including around heat sink areas, as this can cause the heating cable to overheat, leading to possible cable failure or excessive hot points, which could exceed the area temperature rating, which is critical in hazardous area installations. After installation is complete on the pipe, measure the insulation resistance again and record the megameter reading in the installation and maintenance manual. Cables are connected into a junction box in order to supply power to the heating cable or to series connect multiple cables. Refer to your design documents for further detailed information. First, screw a reducer into the junction box hub if required. Then insert the tails and pot, ensuring that the pot is well within the junction box. Make sure that the tails do not become trapped between the pot and the gland connector or reducer bushing if used. Now, tighten the gland connector into the junction box hub and tighten the compression nut. This ensures the cable sheath is properly grounded and prevents moisture from entering the junction box. Electrically connect the heating cable according to the design documents and close the junction box. Quick connectors are used as an alternative method of joining cables in series or to power without the use of a junction box. For joining two XMI cables in series, first coil excess cold lead if needed and form a drip loop in the cold lead to direct water away from the connectors. Then, remove the connector caps and join the connectors together, twisting the locking collars. Finally, tighten the locking screws on the locking collars. For joining an XMI cable to power, remove one of the quick connectors from the mating pair on the XMI cable. Disassemble the quick connector and assemble it to the power cable. Join the connector on the XMI cable to the connector on the power cable, twisting the locking collars. Finally, tighten the locking screws on the locking collars. Depending on your heat tracing design, you have options to use thermostats or advanced electronic control and monitoring systems. Consult the installation manuals or contact us for directions on how to install and commission heat tracing control systems. Once installation is complete, the thermal insulation should be immediately installed, followed by the cladding to protect the insulation from the weather. When required, due to the diameter of the heating cable or number of runs of heating cable used, oversized insulation may be necessary. Check that all valve stems, conduits, connection housing tubes, and any other devices protruding through the insulation have been weatherproofed. This will protect the insulation from moisture, which could damage it. Finally, test the insulation resistance once again and apply electric traced labels on the outside of the insulation at 10 foot intervals and on alternating sides of the pipe where easily visible. When all the components are installed, the system is ready for a commissioning test. Conduct an insulation resistance test at the junction box. Check voltage at circuit breaker panel, energize circuits and measure voltage, amperage draw, ambient temperature and pipe temperature for each circuit. Finally, 
record readings in the installation and maintenance manual, and leave a copy with the end user. Please remember, follow the commissioning test procedures in the installation manual. Be sure to use ground fault equipment protection on each heating cable branch circuit. This is important because it can minimize the danger of fire from sustained electrical arcing if the heating cable is damaged or improperly installed. And it complies with Pentair requirements, agency certifications, and national electrical codes. This completes the installation of your Raychem XMI Mineral Insulated Heat Tracing System and the system should now operate at peak performance. If you have any questions, contact your local Pentair representative or visit us at www.pentairthermal.com